Speaking of the, the left's power to compel pretty much anything, if we move over to the big tech sector, it is amazing how the left is now very, very clear about what they wish for in the big tech sector, and that is to control speech. And they wish to control behavior in the realm of the in the realm of anti-discrimination law. They also wish, with regard to speech, to control the availability of information to you. And so the left has been very, very upset that anyone is noticing these so-called Twitter files. These are files that were released originally by Matt Taibbi, the former Rolling Stone journalist who is definitely of the left. And what those files showed is that Twitter's middle management was essentially coordinating with the Democratic Party at the behest of the FBI, more broadly speaking, to quash the Hunter Biden story in advance of election 2020. So the White House has a response. Wildly untalented press secretary, Corinne Jean-Pierre of the Biden White House. She says, you know what? We shouldn't even focus on the fact that Twitter was shutting down information in advance of election 2020. It's a distraction. It's a distraction from the fact that Twitter is mean and cruel and allows too much speech. It is, it is amazing. When faced with the prospect of actual censorship on behalf of the Democratic Party and soft censorship on behalf of the FBI, Corinne Jean-Pierre's response is, why can't we have more censorship over at Twitter? Because these files were released um, on the basis of, you know, hack materials clause uh, at Twitter. Uh, decisions were made to, to censor reporting leading up to the election. My question was, is it the White House view that these decisions were made appropriately in light of what has come out? So, look, we see this as a, a an interesting or a coincidence, if I may, that uh, uh, that he would so haphazardly, uh, Twitter would so haphazardly push this distraction. Uh, that is a that is a full of uh, old news. It's full of old news. It's a distraction. What we really need is more censoring of speech. Meanwhile, other members of the media echoing this because, of course, the, the mainstream media in the aftermath of the Obama era has decided that they're basically just an adjunct wing for the Democratic Party. It used to be that they, they identified chiefly as journalists. Now they identify chiefly as activists who occasionally produce goods of journalism. A, uh, a commentator named Christine Romans over at CNN, she says that um, you know, the censorship of Hunter Biden's story, that, that's not actually censorship. It's not big tech censorship in any serious way. These are documents related to the internal discussions at Twitter in 2020 around a laptop that was found at a uh, laptop repair shop. repair shop that contained all kinds of really outrageous stuff from the president, now president's son, right? And inside Twitter, what you can see are all of these people who work there saying, is this real? This feels like Russian disinformation. Maybe it is real. Real arguments about how they should treat this material in an election year. Now, what some want you to think is that this was censorship by big tech. Some would like you to think that, but it's not. It's not really censorship by big tech, except how it was censorship by big tech. Meanwhile, Media Matters, Angelo Carasoni, he says that the real problem online is, is not censorship. It is not cracking down on speech. It is not big tech siphoning off which speech it likes. The real problem online is that people are allowing too much free speech to bloom. What we need is more crackdowns on free speech. What are the types of takeaways here that can be, get, that can be prevented? Because this stuff is going to spill over to other platforms. And what I'm really worried about, like just today, Elon Musk is bragging advertisers are coming back when in fact they're not. And what I worry is that at some point this becomes so normalized that the industry starts to adapt and roll back a lot of their types of policies and preventions and protections around this type of extremism and hate, which then raises the temperature elsewhere. So I think we have to make sure that the other platforms don't get worse as a consequence of the type of work and sort of unwinding that he's doing at, twi at, at Twitter. Right, that's what they're really scared of. That's what they're really scared of. Now, what, what do they really want? What they really want, all of these media outlets particularly, what they would really like is for big tech to censor all the stuff from the not approved outlets and to allow stuff from the approved outlets. And this is why it is a travesty that the Republicans are now considering passing a National Defense Authorization Act that essentially protects the big media companies at the expense of conservative media companies, because that is what the Republicans are apparently about to do. Now, what is happening right here? is that Mitch McConnell is looking at this giant omnibus package and he is figuring he does not want this to go over into the new year. What he is afraid of is that the Republicans take over the House, Kevin McCarthy ends up as Speaker of the House. And then there's a knockdown, drag out, debt ceiling fight over an omnibus package. And he doesn't want the political damage. So instead, you just sign whatever the Democrats put on the table right now to avoid that battle for the moment. Because every time there's a debt ceiling fight, driven largely by the Freedom Caucus in the House of Representatives, Whenever there's a debt ceiling fight, Republicans end up losing the debt ceiling fight. Democrats get what they want. Republicans end up caving. There's some sort of deal where Republicans cross the aisle to sign on with Democrats. Joe Biden is not going to simply sign whatever Republicans put in front of him anyway. So he's saying, we'll avoid the entire fight 
We'll just, I'll, I'll give you what you want. We'll get this off the table. The problem is this bill is stacked with a bunch of garbage. The National Defense Authorization Act, which was not supposed to include all of these ancillary measures, now is being proposed to include things like the so-called JCPA, which is the Journalism Competition and Preservation Act, which is H.R. 1735 and S-673, which is now being attached to an omnibus package, which is a way of ramming through unpopular crap attached to things you need to do, like, for example, fund the military. So what exactly is the Journalism Competition and Preservation Act? Well, there's actually some fairly bipartisan opposition to this act. What it is designed to do, it is designed to allow media outlets to band together collusively to then go to the big tech outlets and force the big tech outlets to pay them a particular price in order to use their links, in order for people to post their links. Now, this completely changes how the internet works. If you've been on the internet anytime in the last 30 years, the way that the internet typically has worked is if I feel like posting a link to the New York Times on my Twitter feed, I just do it, right? I just take the link and it's good for it. New York Times. New York Times wants me to post that link because it increases their traffic. Same thing on Facebook. If I go and I post a link to a story from the, the Washington Post on Facebook, this is good for the Washington Post. But what these outlets now want to do is they want to be able to sue places like Facebook or Twitter, some of the big tech outlets, to prevent me or you from posting those links on the outlets unless Facebook and Twitter pay those big outlets. So what is that really doing? Because they have disproportionate power, because a lot of people link to those particular sites, what they're actually doing is they are now forcing the big tech companies to do their bidding. So if you like big tech doing the bidding of the big media companies, then for sure you should back the JCPA. It is a terrible piece of legislation. It has a bunch of provisions that also kind of covertly allow for censorship. The reason being, let's say that you have all of these big media companies that band together and they create essentially a union and they go to Facebook and they say, listen, we're happy to allow you guys to use our links. We just need you not to allow links from our competitors. This gets very dangerous and very censorious very, very quickly. OurStreet.org has a, has a good rundown on this. They say the core issues with the bill remain intact, creating a new pseudo copyright that endangers freely linking to content on the internet, empowering large journalistic conglomerates over the small outlets it claims to benefit, and attempting to use rents extracted from private companies to cover for the failure of legacy media to adapt to changing markets. Again, a lot of these legacy media are failing, having to fire people. So now they're attempting to siphon off money from the big tech companies through collusive bargaining. The original text of the JCPA already authorized print media companies to form one or several cartels and collectively bargain with the largest online platforms to find in terms that single out Facebook and Google. Although the bill hinted at these news cartels being able to demand payment for merely linking to their content or hosting snippets like the results you get from Google News, the mechanism by which they would be paid was left vague. However, the fact that the bill allowed news companies to withhold content strongly suggested a claim to some sort of property right or ancillary copyright that the targeted platforms would owe for even hosting links and snippets. Now, typically, again, the way the New York Times, the big outlets, even Daily Wire, the way that we operate is if you hit a certain number of articles, then you might hit a paywall. And that's how we get you to subscribe, right? New York Times, New York Times has 7 million subscribers. Daily Wire has a million subscribers. Right? This sort of stuff is not rare on the internet. Now, they would like for the big tech companies to either ban me from posting their links or the big tech companies will have to pay these companies in order for people to be able to post a link. Again, a link is not the story. The story is the story. You put up a paywall. The link is directing people to the story. The revised JCP, uh, JCPA rigs the outcome of the news cartels negotiation via must carry provision and forced arbitration. Government forced arbitration forecloses any possibility of Google or Facebook walking away from the table. This bill actually says that if there can't be an agreement between big tech and big media, then they will be forced into an arbitration negotiation where an arbitrator gets to decide what the deal is. Meanwhile, by forcing the covered platforms to carry content from any outlet that's part of one of the news cartels, the JCPA compels platforms to carry speech they might find objectionable. Republican senators were concerned that Facebook and Google might react to this must-carry requirement by negotiating content moderation provisions with a news cartel that might allow for censorship of conservative news outlets as part of a payment deal. So senators actually reached an agreement on amended language to prohibit content moderation decisions from being part of the bargaining process. But the underlying concern remains that requiring the covered platforms to not only carry, but also pay to link to content that violates their community standards, violates platforms' rights to free association. All right, guys, the rest of the show is continuing right now. You're not going to want to miss it. We'll be getting into why the left wishes to use big tech as its weapon. Plus, we'll be taking your calls. If you're not a member, click the link in the description and join us.